Hello everyone, thank you very much for joining me today. This is a video on the Motorola HT600E uh, UHF uh, 99 channel, 100 channel radio um, and how we program that radio and read it and the software and also in the next video I look forward to showing you how to program these onto the amateur radio frequencies below 440 megahertz um, and what we do in the software to do that okay so first of all I've <coughs> I'm running the HT600D software in DOS as it should be on an old computer there's a reason for that which I'm going to go into in a moment but first of all before we go into the software side um, on a matter of what a lot of people come across is the difficulties in programming these radios is getting the radio interface box to work now there's a lot of these floating around from China these radio interface boxes they do work however it's been my experience uh, that the 9 volt battery that goes in here the PP3 9 volt battery um, they don't seem to pack enough punch these even a new one in order to get the charge pump the book circuit inside that's used for level changing to operate properly whilst dealing with serial data <coughs> as well and you get some very strange problems you'll get the green light on but this LED will blink very very um, sort of uh, shallow it'll not be quite a bright blinking red LED when it's doing data transfer because that's what that LED represents data transfer between the computer and the radio and obviously when the serial data are being exchanged back and forth this will then flash accordingly and you'll find that sometimes these either don't flash or it'll blink very very shallow and um, very dimly um, so my recommendation is do away with the 9 volt battery uh, even the genuine Motorola radio interface boxes that were around originally have the same issue I remember it well actually come to think of it that the 9 volt batteries that went in in the compartment underneath the Motorola ribs, the genuine ones had issues and it wasn't until you plugged permanent DC 12 volts power on the input that you got rid of the issue and that's what's happened with me here I've been struggling for a long time now trying to get this to read and couldn't do and I was dealing with issues with the PC and the radio nothing to do with that, it's just powering it from the um, external DC source sorts all your problems out so do that if you're having problems, fully recommend it now the second thing is if you're programming a radio with a Motorola HT600, the MT1000 as it's known as in the United States and elsewhere in the world, uh, it's the same with the Motorola P210s, the HT800s, the ones with the channel knobs on the top, the same build, um, you'll encounter these issues with the radio interface box as well so just be aware of that um, and you may also get the same with ribless leads if I've got a 9 volt battery operation you might have to power them from a permanent 9 volt DC supply either a bench supply or some other means now the computers are quite important I've got lots of laptops and they're all various ages from uh, an old machine like this which is a 16 bit 386SX from the 1980s right the way up to modern Windows 10 machines and everything else in between Windows 98, Windows 2000, Windows NT, Windows XP, Windows 95 from Pentium 1's to Pentium 4's and upwards so this is where I need to just warn you that if you've got a machine that's got a, over a 100 megahertz bus speed and a processor speed in excess of 600 megahertz you might have issues trying to get the radio to read so you tend to find that the LED will blink initially and then the radio will reset and it will say error reading radio now the software works on any computer doesn't matter what age the computer is the software works anyway that's not the problem the problem is getting it to read the radio and write to the radio and that's done through a 9 way serial port uh, through the radio interface box to the radio if you haven't got that and you're using USB to serial converters and things like that um, and you're having to use things like DOSBox and other emulators it's been my experience that they tend not to work for me that doesn't mean it won't work for you, it's worth a try but I've found that you do have to revert back to older machines I'm afraid and there's a lot of information about this particular problem on the internet so we've gone into the software uh, which is just called HT600E.exe 
Uh, we run it from MS-DOS. There's DOS 5 on this machine. Um, we can select, for example, a band. I'm going to select um, uh, number 5, I think. And then we'll turn the radio on. Okay, so we've got the radio switched on, the lead plugged in the top, the rib box and everything. And now we'll read the radio by pressing number 1. Okay. Now what you'll see is the LEDs blinking, red LED there, and then, now it says read, it's read the radio. We're using COM1 in this case, press the key to continue, press enter, and then we can go to uh, read um, number 4, edit per channel information, and there we've got the channel numbers and the frequencies. Okay, so just a quick run through here. Uh, we've got this on the amateur radio frequency and we've taken it out of band. I'll explain in the next video how you take these radios out of band and how you do that in the programming software. It's actually done in the config file and you use a word editor like Notepad or anything like that that can edit the, the physical hexadecimal um, code that's in the config file. And that's how you change the band split info. So you don't have to modify anything in the radio physically. There are things on the internet. I've seen them cutting tracks on boards and goodness knows what else. You don't have to do anything like that. You can do it all from the software. And I'll go into that next. So there we've got the frequencies that you can put in. Um, transmit, receive. The timeout timer is for transmit. So you can have that yes or no. Um, if you select the timeout timer the time itself is configured elsewhere in the software which I'll show you in a moment so that will if you get the radio lodged between say a seat cushion or something like that um, or you lay on the radio or something like that um, if you're security guard or something and you fall asleep for example and they press the PTT button in on the radio it'll only transmit for whatever time you set there in the in the software and then it will uh, unkey the radio so it doesn't keep transmitting because these radios, when fully charged, can last for over 10 hours on a shift, um, even on transmit, you know, so you've got to be aware of that. So, receive only channel, do you want it to receive only and not being able to transmit? Yes, no. Uh, you can set up the private line frequencies and everything for the CT and CSS, quick time codes, all sorts of little bits and bobs like that. If you are using uh, um, these on amateur radio frequencies, it's worth noting that you can't program a um, unlike unlike some um, radios. You can't program a seat um, a seventeen fifty eight tone burst. I'm afraid uh, on these radios to open up a, an amateur radio analog repeater. But you can program um, frequencies for the CTCSS on transmit and receive. So we've got a transmit CTCSS tone there. You can use the whatever tones are in that table we were in. Pack RT, if you remember rightly, this is for the uh, vehicle uh, ruggedized kit. When you plug it into that, it becomes a ruggedized mobile. Um, and I think they use this typically in the States, or they used to, where they had like a vehicle adapter kit, and the radio just slotted into that, and they had then a fist mic and speaker and everything, so the radio became a fixed mobile. That's a setting to allow that to occur, I believe. Uh, that's the receive squelch CTCSS tones again you can select from the table we're in earlier. The TX inhibit on uh, busy channel so if that's set to yes if a radio is receiving a signal it will not allow you to transmit until the receiving stopped. And then the quick call alert is a feature which I've never really understood in Motorola um, programmers but it seems to be used a lot. And basically that's for when you're scanning uh, the eight channels that you can scan that you can set user settable not necessarily in the software but you can set it on the radio yourself and if you have a tone set in the menu we were in earlier um, which is where we saw the CTCSS um, tones uh, and what have you there's a quick call alert tone feature in there <coughs> excuse me and uh, basically what happens is is when you um, are scanning, if it receives that tone on any of the channel, it sort of quickly goes to that channel. It's a quick call feature. 
so I've never really understood how it works to be honest with you and I've tried setting it up and trying to get it to work and it doesn't seem to do anything really but anyway unless it's something that uh, I'm missing okay so if we come back out of that and then we go into per radio info which is number five on the menu then we can set up extra things so we've got alert tones um, so things like when we set up scan channels or when um, the radio switched on and off etc and if I just press enter I think it is then we've got channel busy light so when it's receiving a signal the LED there's a little LED on the top um, which is just where is it the radio there's a, a transmit LED and there's a receive LED they're only tiny but basically one of these lights will blink when it's receiving a signal and uh, we have then uh, the transmit light, so the red LED uh, light that comes on when you press the press to talk switch. Uh, what else? Let's have a look. Force monitor, so that's the button on the top of the radio. This top button there. And you press that in whether that works or not. Uh, the timeout timer duration is set 200 seconds on this. You could set it 60 seconds for a minute. That's the parameter we're in earlier where it will uh, stop the radio from transmitting after that time if a PTT is held down. The battery saver function, what that does, if it's not receiving a signal, it will switch the receiver on and off. It'll pulse it every so many 500 milliseconds or whatever. It'll switch the receiver or switch it back on, switch it off, switch it back on, keep doing that. And then when it receives a signal, it will keep the power on. When the signal disappears from the receiver, the receiver will still continue to be supplied power for maybe 10, 15 seconds. And then if no signal is received again, then it will start pulsing the receiver. So the microcontroller will save power and the radio will save power on the battery if that's enabled. Uh, obviously that disabled automatically when you go to transmit as well. And, um, and that's how that works. The good radio bleep, that's for when you turn the radio on, which is this, this tone you get, confidence beep, when you switch it on. The CVC display flip, that's so that um, if you press both of these buttons down together, the channel up and down together, it will flip the display the other way around. So if you're wearing the radio this way around, for example, the display will turn that way. And likewise, to revert again, you just press them down again and it'll flip again. So that's what that's for. Um, channel scan. Um, you can set that to different types of scans. So at the moment, it's set to priority. So when you set a priority channel up, it will then, um, whichever channel you'd set as priority, that will then um, be, give you a pick tone as it receives that channel. It can scan eight channels plus one priority channel. The priority channel is the last channel you were on before you set it into scan mode. And um, scan is user programmable on the radio using the combination of the uh, toggle switch at the top here, uh, which puts it into scan when it's to the right position. That's for private line if you set PL tones up on receive and that middle position is normal mode, right to scan. You program the scan channel by pressing the second button down, which is this button, the light, the LED light, LCD display light button. You hold that down, okay, at the same time as you're flicking this switch to the right. The radio will beep, and when you let go, you can then select a channel for channel one, press the PTT once and it'll pip, and then go to the next channel again to set the channel 2 if you like of the 8 channel list press the PTT again I'll do that in a separate video anyway and then you come out of the, the scan programming by going to the middle the radio beep again and then when you then flick it to the right it'll start scanning those new channels that you've put in so I'll go into that more in depth anyway in another video um, so the types that we can set here is uh, you can have priority Non-priority, so it'll just pick up any of the eight channels you program. Uh, Non-priority with CTCSS, private line as more I like to call it. Or priority with CTCSS, or none at all. Uh, you've got user scan program. If that's set to yes, 
then it'll allow you to do that that I've just shown you, which is to set the programmer, um, you know, with yourself, uh, with it not plugged into this thing. And then you can set up user, user channel list. So these are the eight channels that I was telling you about. And they're the ones that you can program in. So basically, uh, that's how you can... Um, set up the channels in there as well as doing them manually in the radio so if we come F10 out of that F10 the only other thing we've got then is tuner menu now tuner is where we can set up things like the carrier squelch so the level of which the receiver will squelch out at in microvolts which we set with a signal generator um, the tone squelch level again that's the level in which we can detect a CTCSS tone, whether it's um, very sensitive or very deaf, we're receiving a CTCSS tone. The scan squelch, that's the squelch threshold for the scanner. The volume, that's the maximum volume level that the volume pot on top. Um, so, for example, if you program this radio where the maximum volume is there at 245, it will be quieter at 245 and it will be if it was set at 255 when it was at the maximum position so basically it's to stop the radio from being too loud that's particularly useful when you're using things like earpieces and things like that that you don't deafen somebody when you're doing it the per channel bit on the right that's telling us what channel we're on while we're doing this test and the transmit deviation is what the frequency modulation deviation is again we would inject an audio signal and we would monitor that on a radio test instrument which I'll show you in a later video and that will set up the maximum TX deviation for when we're speaking into the microphone the reference deviation is the CTCSS or private line deviation so for example if you're on a 12 and a half kilohertz channel um, we would use 350 Hz deviation on transmit um, likewise for a 25 kilohertz channel we could use 4 500 Hz and we would adjust it accordingly on there so that's it for now um, I shall do a video separately on how to program these radios out of band in the software config file I shall also do another video on the tuner menu as well uh, that'll follow this video the only thing left to show you is the display feature list which is number nine and then you can do a full display feature list and then it will give you all the information about the radio and uh, it's just uh, bear in mind that when you're going through these different menus sometimes you press space bar to access things other times you press enter other times you have to press f10 other times you go down down with the arrows and it can be a pain in the backside trying to do things but you'll get used to it f5 changes the com port if you're using a serial 9 way you can change it between COM1 and COM2 and um, that toggles a COM port um, so now it's using COM2 and then COM1 etc um, so again if you're using modern PCs trying to program these radios you're probably going to have issues you probably won't get it to program especially if it's got a USB and you're using serial it doesn't really work well with emulators uh, DOS emulators, all that kind of thing, so you might need to just try and get yourself a really old laptop or a desktop machine that runs DOS on it, um, or Windows 98, something like that, that can emulate DOS, and then try and program the radio. A lot of it's to do with the bus speed um, of, the, of the machine, um, so bear that in mind, and that's the same for a lot of the old Motorola's. So, thank you for watching this video, I'll come back in the next video, um, with some details about how to program them out of band and what you need to do to do that and then the tuner menu and how we tune the radios and set them up properly so that they can be used in the correct circumstance thank you bye bye